Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope that you all guys are well and doing absolutely fine. If you clicking the video for the first time and like to listen true, scary stories on daily basis then, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to share the video. Let's not take much time and just start with the stories. I had this experience a month ago now, and haven't been able to stop thinking about it. Really curious to hear what you think might have been going on. I, a mid-twenties woman, was traveling solo through Europe for the month of March. I had the most incredible time, and overall felt extremely safe. There was just one encounter that felt so bizarre and, honestly, scary. It was around 10 a.m. in a mid-sized city in Germany on a Sunday. I had just checked out of my hotel and was walking through the city center with my backpack on my way to the train station. Lots of people around, waiting for the tram and walking. Super safe area. I noticed a woman standing in the middle of the street where the tram tracks were. She was wearing a backpack on her front, but not like a traveler's backpack, a smaller one. She looked maybe early forties, wasn't disheveled, looked clean, was dressed appropriately for the weather, etc. Soon after I passed her, I heard her calling out in German and soon realized she was calling out to me. She was clearly not in distress asking for help. She wanted to make conversation, and with many folks I'd be totally down for that, but something about this person was instantly not sitting right with me. I ignored her at first, but she would not stop. So as I kept walking, I said, Sorry, I don't speak German. In hindsight, this was stupid, and later in my trip I wouldn't have done it, but I was still getting used to all this. Oh, you want to speak American? She said. We can speak American. I ignored her, but soon became aware that she had started following me. I picked up my pace and ducked into a crowded bakery, thinking either she wouldn't see or at least I'd be around other people in a contained space. I ordered, but before I even sat, I saw her come in and order something too. I was pretty freaked out at this point. I sat down and put in my earbuds and opened a book, not actually listening to or reading anything, but hoping it would keep her from talking to me. Nope. She came over and sat at my table. I tried to ignore her, but again she was relentless, waving at me and smiling. I don't know how to describe her smile. It was like... just really forced and unnatural, like she was putting on some kind of act. I asked what she needed, and she told me that she'd seen me walking and thought I looked like I needed some compassion. I told her no, I was good, everything was fine but thanks, trying to be as appeasing as possible while still making my disinterest clear. She just kept smiling at me and asked if I had money and a place to stay. I told her yes, I was fine. She started talking about various things, people she'd met on trains, dance classes, etc. Her English was not great, so I didn't really understand a lot of it, but suffice it to say these were all completely random topics. The really strange thing, though, is that I didn't get the impression that she had a mental illness or any kind of neurodivergence that would explain a conversation like this. It felt like she was trying to think of ways to just keep talking to me, like, at times, I could see the wheels turning in her head as she tried to come up with something, anything else to say. This went on for probably five minutes. Finally, she offered to move to her own table. I said yes, that would be great if she could. She sat at the one closest to me, but even then tried to get my attention and talk to me. She finally sort of stopped but still kept looking back at me and pulling out her smartphone to text someone. Also, she never once touched the massive slice of cake that she had bought at this bakery. There was one man, a fellow customer, sitting nearby who looked sympathetic to me and kept glancing over like he was suspicious of this woman, what was going on. But I don't think he spoke English, so he couldn't really understand. 
and it's not like I could have explained it to him as I don't speak German. My heart was racing. Finally, I decided I needed to get out of there. I kept checking Google Maps to see when the next tram would arrive. There was a stop almost right outside. And once it was just a minute away, I slipped out of the bakery while the woman was looking down at her phone and ran onto the tram. I watched the doors the whole time to make sure she didn't follow me on and didn't stop looking behind me until I was safe at the train station. I haven't been able to stop thinking about this, and I don't know what to make of it. I met tons of outgoing people in Europe, people much more direct and sociable than Americans, but no one else ever made me feel the way this woman did. Something about the whole situation, following me, buying something that she never ate just so she could come into the bakery, looking back at me and texting someone, just felt so off. I believe I have pretty good instincts when it comes to people, and this person just didn't feel right from the beginning. I can't help but be afraid that she saw me with my backpack, quite obviously a tourist, and was planning on doing something to this naive and vulnerable American. I guess I'll never know, but I'm curious to hear if any of you have ideas, or if I'm just totally misreading a harmless situation. Thanks so much for listening. About a year ago, when I was 19 and living in a small Australian town, I had a rather unsettling experience during my usual evening walk with my 13-year-old Jack Russell mix. Typically, we'd take a short stroll around the neighborhood around 7 to 7.30 p.m., but on this particular night I had to work late, so we set out around 8, 8.30 p.m. As the sun was setting, visibility wasn't great, though I could manage without a flashlight although I had one on hand just in case. As we were completing our loop around a nearby community garden, I noticed someone dressed all in black heading toward us. I, too, was dressed in dark clothing, so we both appeared somewhat suspicious. Feeling a pang of unease, I quickly crossed the road and headed left. To my alarm, the person mirrored my actions almost instantly. Though I'm naturally a fast walker, I hastened my pace determined to put some distance between us. With only a final road crossing and a right turn separating me from home, I increased my speed slightly and made the turn. The person across the road didn't follow but continued on their side. As we walked parallel to each other, I realized that if they decided to cross, I could easily make a run for it. I wasn't far from safety. When I reached my yard, however, Panic struck as I realized I didn't have my house key, and the door was locked. The person stopped across the road, seemingly observing me. Desperate, I rang the doorbell and pounded on the door until my older brother answered. Seeing the stranger advancing into our yard, my brother confronted them, telling them to leave, which they did, retreating in the direction we had come from. I explained the situation to my brother, shaken by the encounter. Since then, I've made a habit of walking my dog in the early mornings before work rather than in the evenings. Though I miss the serene sunset strolls, my safety comes first, and I can't risk another unsettling encounter. Many years ago when my daughter was potty training, a friend recommended I keep a travel potty with me. It saved me from rushing to find a restroom and avoiding stopping in anywhere questionable with a toddler. We would drive about 40 minutes to pick up my husband on his lunch break. That afternoon, we were headed back to drop him off at work and were only about a block from the restaurant when my daughter said she had to go. The area we had just headed into was a large business park or with lots of very large buildings to the left and right. I saw one, and the parking lot looked empty. I pulled over to the side of the building and parked at a curb. I had two car seats taking up my back seat and my husband in the passenger seat, 
so I took my daughter out of the car and set her up in the trunk to use the potty. I had just got her settled, and she was looking uncomfortable and covering her face and looking down. I look behind me, and I see a woman walking up to me. It was summer at the time and very warm. She was wearing a jean skirt and tank top and had a cross-body purse. She looked at my daughter and said, Don't be embarrassed, we all go through it, and laughed. She said she needed a ride to the freeway and asked if I could take her. I told her that I was sorry, but I couldn't. She started to seem bothered and asked why I couldn't take her. I said my back seat is full so I didn't have room for her. She snapped back. So you're telling me you put your daughter in the front seat? I told her no that my husband was in the front seat. As soon as she heard that I wasn't alone and had my husband with me, she started to slowly backing away and walking down the street she came from. As she was walking away she said, Oh I'm sorry, I used to be from here but not anymore, and quickly walked off. If she would have made a left on the cross street she was walking towards when going towards my car, there was restaurants and gas stations a block up, plenty of people to ask for a ride. I still am so grateful my husband was with me that day. I don't know what her true intentions were, but getting to a populated area didn't seem to me one of them.